Okay, so there's been a little bit of confusion about Jonathan Brown's mark in the last quarter against Essendon. What's the line of thought regarding the boundary umpire overruling the goal umpire? Yeah, it was an interesting situation. We had a field umpire pay the mark. From the angle he was on, he, he paid the mark. From there, we've got a goal umpire who's in, inside the, uh, between the two goal posts, and we've got a boundary umpire right on the behind post looking across without uh, anything obstructing his view. So field umpire pays the mark. Goal umpire taps his chest to say that he thought the ball may have crossed the scoring line, but we've got a boundary umpire there in perfect position who believed the ball had been marked as well. So as soon as there's some conflicting view between the goal umpire, the field umpire and the boundary umpire, obviously they then go to a consultation process. Once the consultation process took place, it was agreed that the boundary umpire, who was in perfect position, uninterrupted view, he had the best view, so his call stood. So from there, if it comes back inconclusive, we go with the umpire that had the clearest view and is the most certain about that decision. In this case, the boundary umpire, clear view, very certain it had been marked, so therefore the mark stood. That process took a little bit of time. Are you completely satisfied with how they went about it? Always with consultation, always with these scoring uh, decisions. Where there is a little bit of you know doubt from different parties, they have to go through a process, and it does take a little bit of time. I mean, we'd, in a perfect world, we'd like it to happen uh, quickly, but unfortunately, we've got to go through the process, check everybody's views. In this case, it was the boundary umpire, as I keep saying, in that perfect position, uninterrupted view, was absolutely certain the ball was cleanly marked before the whole of the ball had crossed the line. Okay, Friday night's game, it was a close game. Uh, that free kick to Selwood in the dying moments, are you satisfied with that call? Yes, we are. And look, we've had a chance to look at all the vision now and we can clearly see um, some high contact from shoulder and upper, upper bicep that makes contact with Selwood's face and neck area. So uh, umpire in a good position to see that, saw it, paid the free kick as he saw it and there is high contact there. So the timing of it, the lateness of the game and all those sorts of things creates a lot of emotion about it. But if an umpire sees that high contact, he's obliged to pay that high contact, which he did. Okay, there was a couple of incidences where players played on without going back behind their mark. Corey Enright was one. Uh, what did you make of that decision? Yeah, well, that was a really interesting one. Enright took the mark. Um, he was outside his line. By the time he completed the marker, he moved off his line. But he was also probably forward of his mark as well. And um, in that situation, Enright played on and got an unfair advantage. The umpire was actually calling for him to come back behind his mark. He never did that and the umpire called play on. So that was an error by the umpire. That was one where he should have been stronger, followed through, made sure that Corey Enright came back onto his line, but also behind his mark, because we can deem out of this that Corey Enright got an unfair advantage by being able to run on without anybody being on his mark. And what about Andrew Cracker in the last quarter? Yeah, that was um, another really interesting one, and very clever by Cracker. The free kick obviously occurred where the infringement took place. He was taken high, and he was laying on the ground, uh, the umpire came in to pay the free kick and from there Cracker basically stood up on his mark and just kept going to goal. So had he been forward of that mark, the umpire's obliged to bring him back behind the mark because he could have got an unfair advantage. But he actually stood up where the infringement occurred and then just uh, walked into goal or ran into goal and kicked the goal. So that one technically OK, but clearly the end right one should have been set up behind his mark and on his right line. Perfect. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you.